time to get spotted this fantastic Saturday afternoon. Of course, it's the time for the touchline on Y254. A very good afternoon and welcome to the program. My name is Max Olwasika. As usual, one to three, we're keeping it sporty, talking matters, you know, that are trending as far as sporting headlines, both locally and beyond across sporting disciplines. I'm not alone. I'm with uh, another musketeer by the name Robert Osoro. Big man, what's good? I'm good, man. Happy to be here for another sports weekend, ready to tell the world what is happening in the world of sports because today is a big, big day in the world of athletics and other sports events. You've been in, missing in action throughout the week. What have you been up to? <laughs> Were you in Ghana for the <laughs> Afghan qualifier fixture pitting our very own Arambe Stars and against Black Stars? No, 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 I did not manage to go to Ghana. I traveled up country though, went there to see my pups, but I'm back. Definitely, you know, the drill double two six. Two, starting with the word touch and of course you can also join social media handles at Wasike Maxwell at Y254 channel hashtag touchline Y254 and at Osoro Roberts. So of course we're going to speak about what has been trending as far as the sports pages are concerned. We start uh, with local highlights. Of course we're getting patriotic and the national team it's official. Mm -hmm. They have qualified to the African Cup of Nations uh, slated for Egypt later this year in June. It's mm -hmm. official amongst 24 countries that will be taking part in the continental showpiece. But the last formality tie against Black Stars of Ghana that is last Saturday and he, I and you were together at the boxing ring in KICC while that game was underway we were streaming but how do you assess of Kenya's readiness going by that time ahead of the continental competition? Good game they played they were defensively tight even though they managed to concede one goal against the Black Stars of Ghana but I think even if it was a formality game and everything is done and Arambe Stars are in the AFCON right now, the big question are, and the work starts right now for Sebastian Mina because now you are in a, an Africa Cup of Nations which you have not been there for the last 15 years. Some other teams in Africa have really, really improved. You look at teams from the North African side, the likes of Egypt, Tunisia, Morocco, Algeria. These are teams that have improved in infrastructure and the quality of sports that they have. And you look at other teams that are coming in from the likes of South Africa, the likes of Madagascar, Mauritius, who are coming on to the side, Angola, Togo. These are teams that have made actually to the World Cup. Also, Cameroon is also there because they are actually the current champions. But now, Kenya being one of the East African sides, because we've got Uganda, Uganda which is going there for the second year now, that they will be making an appearance at the Africa Cup of Nations. Kenya, which is there for the very first time in 15 years. Tanzania being there for also, I think, uh, something like 30 years that they have not been there. And also Burundi. For all these teams, for them is, you have got to be ready for the Africa Cup of Nations. It is good this time around. It's an expanded Africa Cup of Nations of 24 teams. But how ready will you be for that showpiece? Because at the end of the day, you'll be meeting the best sides. Look at a team like Senegal that has most of its players playing in Europe. There will be a different side. Led by Can, Sadio Mane who yeah. plays at Liverpool. Yeah, Sadio Mane, Koulibaly. You look at Ghana itself. They like the Thomas Partey. It's Thomas Partey. They are Samoa brothers. They are Quado, Samoa himself. They are you brothers. The, the, the quality of the players that we'll be expecting at this year's Africa Cup of Nations will be good. The quality of the management itself that will be in the Africa Cup of Nations will be good. So, Kenya has got to be ready. As a fan, as a journalist here in the country, I don't expect wonders from Kenya, but I expect them to have a good fight, but then again, make it to the next edition of Africa Cup of Nations. Kenya is one of the 24 nations that have made it to the African Cup of Nations, slated for Egypt later this year. Of course, Eastern Africa contributing four countries, taking part in continental shop. It's just a few months from now, as you speak, Kenya, Uganda, cranes of Uganda, Tanzania as well. And you yes. remember that time, beating Uganda and Tanzania, Taifa stars of Tanzania, ending 3-0 in favor of Tanzania. But we're going to get to that in a, a while. But just before then, let's listen in to Sebastian Minya, the Frenchman, and the tactician for the national team, Arambe Stars, alongside goalkeeper Patrick Matasi, who considered a goal, though accidental, of course, upon their arrival at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, speaking to members of the press with regards to what happened and the future expectation going forward. Let's listen in. A mistake, but uh, I don't forget what he did before for, for us, for me, you know. It's the life of a team. Uh, it's different for goalkeeper because uh, Victor, Masoud, Olunga, when he's there, can commit a mistake after there is some uh, 
teammate uh, to come back and to try to repair the mistake. When you're a goalkeeper, it's, uh, it's more difficult. Uh, it's not easy to, to be a goalkeeper and to be a good goalkeeper. But he's on the way. Uh, since I'm here, with a full squad, he, he realized at least five clean sheets, you know, and it was Matasi. So don't forget it. And yesterday, it was Ghana, and uh, until the 83rd minute, it was a clean sheet also. It was a good game. Uh, all of us, uh, we played according to instruction from the coach. Uh, we expected to get something on that match, but definitely we didn't. So it was our last match. So I think we have enough time to prepare and face the big stage. You know, this is football and uh, when something rises, people will have just to look for something to talk about, you know. Uh, if you look at that ball uh, that we considered uh, it at that minute, we lost the ball in the midfield and then uh, when my defence was still going out, the, strike, the striker managed to beat them. So the reaction I did was, uh, it was just a little miscalculation in terms of uh, seconds going down. So that's why the ball slipped and Coach Sebastian Mini and his custodian Patrick Matasi speaking upon the arrival at Jomo Kenyatta International Airport from uh, Accra, Ghana, where they were taking on Black Stars of Ghana in their formality last group tie that ended 1-0 in favor of the hosts. And still with Matas football, but with the under-23 of the national team, the emerging stars also were bundled out of the under-23 uh, African Cup of Nations qualifier come Olympic uh, qualifier. Uh, qualification tournament. And of course, remember during the first leg, they were beaten 2-0 by Sudan, coached by a man who's been in charge of the local teams, both Godma Football Club and FC Leopards, that is Dravko Lugarusi. And at home, of course, uh, Francis Kimanzi uh, probably thought that he would overturn the first leg deficit by scoring three goals, but it didn't turn to be, you know, what was expected to be the outcome. The game ending in a stalemate. But what do you assess of the potentiality amongst the young tucks? Uh, I think it's uh, you've got the talent, you've got the players, but you need the continuity of the players, and you realize that the under 23 have not been playing for a very long time together as a team. I think. This is, I think, the third time that we are losing an Olympic qualifier in the penultimate stage where we are starting off in that stage. So it is very bad for the emerging stars that they are coming out that way. But it's a good lesson for them in that most of it that they need is more of continuity in the team. And also the young players who are coming in because they play local club football. Most of the players are from the club like Madare, Karubangi Sharks and everything. I think it's more about continuity of these players. After the under-23 is done, most of the players will move out. Their other new ones will be coming in because the next time we are going for the under-23, we'll be coming out with players who were born, I think, in 97, 98. So we'll be getting more of the under-17s, under-19, graduating on to the under-23. So that continuity is what can help us move the next step ahead. Of course, after that particular outcome, both co coaches Francis Kimanzi of the Emerging Stars alongside Dravko Lugarusi, who said that uh, he didn't want to celebrate the outcome, despite, you know, his earlier sentiments that he had lined up a squad comprising of young tucks from the street, saying that if only fielded players, you know, who are his first 11 players, you know, then he would have, be he would have beaten Kenya by a spectacular scoreline. But of course, saying that he loves Kenya, is patriotic, he's been in charge of the local team, FC Leopards and Gormaya Football Club. There for deciding not to celebrate, but let's listen in to both Francis Kimanzi and Zidraf Kolugarusik, both for Kenya and Sudan respectively, speaking after the match at Kasarani Stadium. Uh, today, today Kenya were unlucky, they didn't score. They had their chances and they didn't score. If they score the goal, the game will be completely open. But you, they have three, three really good chances, they didn't score. If you don't score at home, uh, you must be punished, that's for sure. And, uh, the, uh, but what other thing also, I must give credit to my team. In two games, we didn't receive goal against Kenya. That's not a small thing. That's not a small thing. Also, I have to say, uh, only I have uh, four players, they play Premier League. The rest of them are first division, second division, and third division, some of them from the schools. 
That means uh, I took them 15 days in Egypt to try to make a team. We worked very hard and with peace of luck today we, we passed. For today especially, yeah, because uh, we may be very few chances. But uh, yeah, I think we had a lot of chances to knock in the net. But uh, we have to accept. I think uh, the only thing is converting the chances that you... Because to open up the game you need a goal. And you need it, you can even win the game with five minutes before the end of the time. But you need to open the score. So I believe we had, we had opportunity to do that early in the first half. But again, we were a little bit unlucky. So a lot of missed chances, of course. Then uh, we kept the game on their side because they play against time yeah? they want to slow every single moment that it is it is because they have an advantage so for us it was a, it's a real real uh, tough tasks and you don't deserve to go through if you don't want to open the game in the beginning and you can only open it the draft kolugarusik and francis kimandi both of kenya and sudan respectively speaking at Mo international sports center kasarani on wednesday after the outcome pitting kenya and sudan that ended in a stalemate and therefore kenya is officially out of under 23 african cup of nations qualifier come Olympic qualifiers big blow as you know we seek to transition from the junior to the senior I, I don't think it's a big blow because we have never been there it's all about investing in that team giving them what they deserve and I think from the onset they've got a good coach in Francis Kimanzi just invest in the coach and the team then we can see the fruits of it going forward because if we can get our under-23 to the Africa Cup of Nations, that will be a very big and good step. If you can get to the Olympics, that's a good step. But you don't want to get into such tournaments and be ashamed of yourself because you'll be getting teams that are better prepared than you. Don't want scores like 8 nails. So you are out, yes, but work hard to get the quality that can go to such tournaments. Of course, moving on to another headline. Yesterday, I don't know whether you were keen on social media platforms, especially on Twitter, KOT. Yeah. They call themselves so. They pile much pressure on Sports Kenya after, you know, that uh, pronouncement from the Sports Kenya led by Pius Meto, Director General, that Kasarani Stadium wouldn't be available for Gourmet Football Club as they seek to take on uh, Berkane from Morocco in their continental football. But after that, unwavering pressure from Kenyan football followers, then Amina Mohamed, CS, new CS Sports, are and culture had to say that now it will be available unlike before because the expo was supposed to take place at Kasarani till 7th next Sunday. But just getting on that, we're speaking about Nyayo National Stadium which is uh, under renovation and of course inspection happened on Friday led by Amina herself alongside parliamentarians especially in sports committee and of course following the assessment they say that in a few weeks or months from now the stadium will be ready to host you know Kenya Premier League matches and even continental ties because as we speak right now Ruaraka Stadium uh, that is meant for Task FC look shambolic. I don't know what do you assess of <laughs> in the matters of stadium the readiness of our facilities they are worse they are bad they are badly off but on the issue of yesterday regarding Kasarane Stadium I don't buy that that Gormaya had to use that sports facility because for a team like Gormaya that was formed way back in 1968 50 years down the line and you don't have a facility, it's really bad for you. It's really, really bad. And even if sports stadia and the cabinet secretary for sports had to cede to pressure from many football followers for Gormaya to have that match in the Kasarane Stadium, the Expo deserved to be there because they planned it a year earlier. Gormaya never knew that they were going oh, sorry, to get into the quarter final. No, let, let me finish. Let me finish my <laughs> point. And... If Gormaya are getting onto the quarterfinals and they are going to use that facility, they should just thank God that these people allowed them to use that facility. Because at the end of the day, they could have said, no, you're not going to use this facility. Go to Machakos or go to Kisumu. What's the key priority for sports stadium? Sports stadium is not only about football. But what's the key priority? The key priority, you, you can say sports events. Yes. Yeah. Then, if it's sports events, why don't you have your own stadium for those sports events? Look at England. How many stadiums does the country have? Each club the has government. its own stadium, yeah, but you see you can't compare Kenya no, to England. No, 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 no. <laughs> if you can't compare your football to the best of the best in quality and everything in the world, then what are you doing in the Probably world Probably the football? main undoing of Gourmet Football Club was a failure to have an earlier booking for the facility. No, it's not failure because 
this the, the company is it the Kenya Manufacturers Association, private yes. manufacturer association that was going to have their expo at the Casalana Stadium. For them they planned earlier. And they had booked the event prior to this event. Gormaya, they could not have booked the event a year earlier because there's a knockout competition. They never knew that we going from the knockout stages, we get onto the group stages and now we are back into the quarterfinal stages. So that is a, a scenario which Gormaya did not know that they are going to have. But at the end of the day, it is just a wake-up call to all the clubs in Kenya, not just Gormaya. It is time to start following the calf licensing mechanisms where you should start having your own fields, start having your own study, not even a big study, start having your own training ground. Because it's very bad for a club like Gormaya. In this day and age, you are still fighting. We need to use the Kasarani Stadium. I think that will form the basis of our discussion next time in our subsequent programming so that we internalize uh, matters, sporting facilities in the country. Remember, Af Kenya missed on hosting Chan, a tournament meant for local best players following uh, lack of readiness and unpreparedness with regards to those sporting facilities available to host the tournament. But before Look, then, yes. let's listen in to Amina Mohamed, CS Sports and Culture alongside PS Ambassador Kirimi Kaberia speaking at Nyai National Stadium on Friday after the inspection. That we are going to do our best to make sure that uh, we complete uh, the work that is outstanding. As you've said, it's 70% uh, complete. Uh, the 30% will be completed, we can assure you. Um, it's always been an issue of resources, of course, uh, but now with the sports fund, we expect to get the resources that are required. Uh, to complete this, uh, the works here, uh, but also in the other study that you that you visited, uh, and so you know we take that uh, that challenge seriously, and uh, we'll be working around the clock to make sure that we do this work. Generally, when uh, members have gone around, we have noticed uh, this facility works are going on well, apart from uh, some uh, shortcomings. We have seen some uh, cracks, which uh, the engineer has promised to look into it and rectify. We want uh, a facility which uh, may not be dangerous to the fans. We want a strong facility. Amina Mohamed, CS Sports, Arts and Culture, alongside uh, Victor Munyaka Machakos, Member of Parliament, who is the, in charge, the chairperson of Parliamentary Sports Committee, speaking exclusively to members of the press on Friday yesterday at Nyaya National Stadium, immediately after the inspection of the ground. Seeing from going by the pictures you've seen on screen, are you looking forward to uh, a state-of-the-art facility? I think it will be a very good study for Kenya and it will be hosting many events. What, what I was trying to put across was former U.S. President Jeff Kennedy said, look at not what the government can do for you, but what can you do for the government. I don't deny it. Our government is badly off. You can debate that on another day. But in mother's sports infrastructure, no matter how bad we want them and no matter how the government can chip it to have them, the sports stakeholders themselves should start thinking of having their own good stadiums. Not only for playing services because they bring in a lot of money. You look at fields out there, Tottenham is opening their new ground. I think you have seen the virtual video of how that stadium looks like. It's a very good field. England, right now, if Qatar fails to host 2022, England just needs a month and they'll have a World Cup tournament in their country without using even the facilities of the government. So as much as the government needs to do this, the sport parties in the country also need to start doing their own part. Of course, as we wind up on the sports pages, we're going to speak about Kenya rugby as well. The elections was conducted, I think, two weeks ago. We have got new office bearers led by Gangla Odwar Jeff, who is the chairperson of Kenya Rugby Union, replacing Richard Omuela, yes. who decided not to defend his seat. But now we're going to speak about the Hong Kong and Singapore Sevens. The squads were named on Thursday at the RFUA grounds. But, you know, notable names, including the top try scorer for Kenya, Colin Sinjera, William Baker, you know, Brian Tanga missing in action, but of course we have other you know, regulars coming on board. Jeffrey Oluoch, who is now the captain, replacing Jacob Oje alongside people like Dan Sikut. Andrew Amonde is also back, the former captain. But what do you make of the capability of the squad ahead of 
Hong Kong and Singapore Sevens. And remember, talking about Singapore Sevens, it's a leg that Kenya was crowned oh, the champions over early under the tutelage of Benjamin Naimba in 2016, if I'm not wrong. What do you assess of the squad? They add value, they add experience coming in onto the side and because most of the players who have played in the first six legs of the circuit are not that experienced to be in that kind of side. So this kind of players who have come in, they are giving the team more experience, they are giving the other young players a lot of morale to go and play in this tournament. I think the only thing that they can go out there is the youth and the players who are in is just to get a win. Because you realize from the other legs that we were there, like in the Vancouver 7s, the 7s team not, did not manage even a win in the five matches that they played. Now you are going on to the Hong Kong 7s and you are in a group with Fiji, Australia and New Zealand. That pool C is a very tough pool C for Kenya. And you are a team going there, you are not organized. The coach doesn't know how which players is going to have because... You have been using players who, have, who are not experienced. The experienced players are coming in. You have very short time to make sure that these players are fit and good enough to go and represent the country. So it's a catch-22 situation for the coach and everybody. But I think at the end of the day, it is just try and gain some sort of result that you can get from the Hong Kong and Sing Singapore Sevens. This is the touchline on Y25. A very good afternoon. My name is Maxwell Wasiko, of course, alongside Robert Osoro. Just trying to put things into perspective as far as matter sports pages. What has been trending in terms of headlines for the sports in the country is concerned. Of course, coming up next, big man is in studio, Morris Odumbe, mm -hmm. a cricket legend and uh, an iconic figure as far as the sport is concerned. So probably, what do you seek engaging him on? What is the punch equation that uh, you would like him to respond to? I think as, a, as an experienced player in the country in matters of cricket, we like to know where we went wrong and how can we come out of it. Because State of cricket in the country coming up next. Don't go away, stay tuned. But just before that, know your sport. Of course, golf is a sport that is closely associated with the rich. But having spoken to several people who are involved in the sport, PGK captain CJ Wangai says that, Osoro Robert, you can as well play golf, despite not making it to the current country club during the last just concluded Kenya Open. Don't go away, stay tuned.